around 5.5 million people are bitten by snakes each year resulting in some 4 lakh amputations and between 20,000 and 1 lakh 25,000 deaths despite this the burden of human suffering caused by snake bite remains largely invisible to the global health community when a toxic bite occurs correct antivenom and right training can be life saving but the antivenom technologies and their use in rural areas is virtually non-existent. Let us meet Padmasri Lakshmi Kuti Amma who belongs to a tribal hamlet and is a practitioner in tribal medicine and also a known toxic healer who saved many lives. Ayurveda and Siddha Vaidya is carried by generations through literatures but we don't have any manuscripts. Our knowledge is verbally as songs and poems. I am having an ancestral background but I also believe in destiny. If one has the destiny to become a Vaidya, he or she will surely become one. We live and grow in forest so we always have a link with nature. In Himalayas, Lord Shivan and Parvati happen to meet two creatures which resemble like human beings, which were senseless and could not be distinguished as male or female. Lord Shiva gave them blessings to increase their population by hunting and killing. This is how they got mastered in archery, hunting and other skills. Then they started having the sense of male and female and emotions too. Earlier they were senseless. They had their own tribal group and lifestyle with tools for hunting. Their population also started increasing. They were violent, cruel and killed eight raw flesh. This came to the notice of Agastya Muni. He understood that these people were master in archery and hunting skills and possess various tools also. He felt that if it is left the same way, it may lead to destruction of flora and fauna and also harm the nature balance, as these people didn't have self-control. Then Agastya Muni took their hunting apparatus and cursed them like this. He said, now you will have to bear the hot sun on your head and you will have to be hard working. You will be living in the forest and mountains, wandering. Your life will be with plants and herbs always. This will continue forever. My maternal uncles were Vaidyars. My mother's younger brother was a very powerful toxic healer. He has even brought a dead child back to life. One day while going for hunting in forest, he saw a gathering for a cremation of a child. He stopped the ritual as he could sense the life force still present in the child. He did healing treatments and performed mantras and brought the child back to life. The family was so happy that they offered a bag full of chakras, the money which was used during those days. But my uncle refused. We believe that money and fees should not be accepted in Vaidyam. It is against our laws. There are also mantras which we use as a prime tool for our treatment. I didn't feel anything at the moment. I didn't have intentions for getting anything in exchange of the service I am doing. We give treatment for everyone. We do not do it for money. People may or may not have money to give, but we don't think of all these while treating the sick. All Indian system should be practiced with discipline. We have to get sync with the nature first. We should be clean externally and internally even while plucking herbs. There are certain things we should take care of while snake bites. Here in the forest and mountain residents know about it. There is a Muslim girl living here. She also knows the regimen and discipline about snake bite treatments. 17 days back, one woman gave me a call at the door. At that time, I was moving around the house, doing nothing. Nothing was going right that day. I was a little restless. 
Just then I heard a call. When I came out, she was holding a sealed cover and wanted to hand over it to me. I thought it must be the workers who offer me natural vegetables from their farm. Thinking that, I accepted it. Then she told her, me that her sister was bitten by a snake. I immediately returned that cover to her. She had actually brought the dead snake. It was not the right thing to do. The patient should be brought first. Instead of that, she brought the dead snake. If the snake bites, we should not harm or kill it. It will cause difficulty and hindrance in the treatment. We get this knowledge not very easily. Working and learning six months in land and six months in water, we get this. And our ancestors are very strict in these disciplines. If they were in my place, they would have even performed mantric karma that may cause trouble for the patient and family. We have an ancestral tradition for this medical system and each person from the family should carry the tradition to the next generation and this way it is continued. In our family, there are also ancestors who have been touched by poisons and they are regarded as mantra murtis. One of them is Willi Vaidyam. Here he is called Willi Vaichyan. He was master in toxic healing. People come to cure Sarpa Dosha in temple. Lord Shiva and Parvati are regarded as Naga Devata and Naga Matao. Mostly ladies are affected by Sarpa Dosha. It is a curse actually. For example, if someone puts a fire to the snake hole, misunderstanding it to rat hole or home of some other animals, he or she gets Sarpa Dosha. One person got this curse when he did it. Actually, it was a hole in which cobra and its young ones were present. Infertility or ability to conceive a child is seen in major cases. But here there are ways to remove the dosha. Even when we go to the forest to pluck herbs, for example in case of heart attack, there is a law to stand in a particular direction and pluck the leaves of the herb in a unique way. Like six leaves from six different branches and it is given to eat raw the juice is consumed and rest is discarded. That moment the symptom stops. Some people take the leaves and make infusions. The extract or juice is the main content of the treatment. The residue is disposed properly after the treatment. There is also a postpartum medicine. Here, Kandhari Milagu or bird's eye pepper is used. It is thick and long which we get here. It is very hot and pungent for the mouth but not for the stomach. Daily it is given to the delivered woman along with dry coconut and dry turmeric. These are dried and kept before delivery itself. Keeping the turmeric and chili the prime ingredient along with them dried coconut in little amount is ground well like a very smooth and waxy paste. The consistency is very important. This is made as curry and given with rice to the delivered woman for 10 days. This is the only food which is given after delivery. This helps in quick healing and bringing her normal health back. On 11th day, the ladies can do all the household work and field work too. The medicine is so much effective. When I delivered my second son, after 10th day, I was planting tapioca here in the yard. One of the trespassers was surprised to see me doing heavy work. Now the ladies don't even move. Even now the ladies here don't have any health issues. They are still following it. After this, non-veg foods are avoided till lactation period. Then after that, every food can be eaten according to their choice. The medicines helps in healing, even prevents the building up of cholesterol. So women here are active and healthy without any health issues. Even for high cholesterol, we recommend this curry instead of taking heavy pills. Early morning is the best. After praying Sun God and Mother Earth, we go for it. Sun God or Adityan is regarded as father. We see Adityan all the time. 
the only God we see is Son. We call it Mannadevan Appan. We pray Mother Earth or Bhuma Devi. We are always in depth of Bhuma Devi. We need it while birth, death, while performing mantras, everything. We have folk songs praising Bhuma Devi. I have understood in Siddha Vaidyam also, medicines are not given during menstruation. In Ayurveda hospital also, medicines are not given. If menses happens between the medication, the medicines are restarted after it stops once again, just like a beginning. Medicines are not given for seven days. Even I followed strict routine. I started healing during my young age. During menses, I didn't attend to cases, even if a toxic bite case comes. In Ayurveda also, the same thing is followed. We are handling sacred medicines, so it should be done with purity only. No, I know treatment, but I don't attend rabies case. Apart from that, I take all toxic bite cases. Recently, a spider bite case came. It was really toxic spider. The hands and legs of the patient shrunk like the legs of the spider. It is highly poisonous. The person won't die, but five days treatment is required. Herbs and medicines for treatment is required. Kiri, talam, medicines internally, medicines to be applied in wounds, Kiri for the whole body, massage, everything has to be done. It is very difficult to do alone, so requires helper also. There were all herbs present in the front of my house. As a part of cleaning and leveling the land for the road, all the plants are gone now. Rare herbs like Elevan, Nuran, which are the climbers found in forest, were also present here. Chembarati, Erivalli, Elevan, Nuran, Karchil and other herbs were also present. Now we have to go to forest and collect it, which is very difficult. I have also given medicines for infertility and uterine problems. Yes, I do. If anyone comes with any, any ailment, I give them medicines. For toxic bites, we do not need to see the snake. Looking at the bite mark, we can understand which poison it is. We also take support of mantras to understand the wound or bite marks. It is a secret science and can't be explained. Even if explained, it won't work. I have traditional Siddha book here. If a lady has menses, she should keep away from other activities and rest in a mat. She should not get bathed for four days and then resume her normal activities. If a lady needs a healthy child, she should follow this. In the second day of the menses, she is called Brahmakari. Women know about it. The body becomes weak, just like a snake which keeps quiet in a corner and sheds its skin. Even prawns and crabs do that. When you take a crab which is in the process of shedding the exoskeleton, if you squeeze it, a milky white liquid comes out. The body is so soft like cotton. We have seen it in the fields. Just like that, similar process is happening in the body of a woman also. So the snake sits in corner for seven days to shed its skin without any movement. One day I saw a snake in this state. In the evening when I went to the temple, I said to it, I am doing my work and I won't disturb you so you can continue your job too. It was eight feet cobra. I completed my puja and came out and came back home. Then later I found the snake skin shed by it just near the lamp. Meeting Lakshmi Kutti Amma was fascinating and exciting for us. We actually went to her to know if there is any link between her tribal system of medicine and Siddha and it was striking to see the presence of Agastir Guru in both the systems. She talked to us about her medical practice, her traditional background, her family background and she also shared postpartum medicine with us which uh, she prescribes and which is followed uh, in her uh, in her village and also she mentioned about menstruation 
and the regulations and the disciplines they are following. Let's see how Siddha looks at the aspect of menstruation. Siddha is not only a medical science but it is a way of life which is formulated by Siddhas thousands of years ago. In Siddha, preventive, medicine, preventive and social medicine is one of the important part and child care and mother care is also a part of it. Everything right from the uh, menarch or when the girl attains puberty to the child care, everything is clearly and elaborately explained in Siddha literatures. So when a girl attains menarch, it is advised to give her the food prepared from black gram, curd rice, uh, eggs and sesame oil. All these are very healthy foods which helps in the development of reproductive organs and maintain it and keep it healthy. Also during the cycles, she is advised to uh, keep away from heavy strenuous work if she's married she's allowed she's asked to keep away from heavy household activities sexual contact is said to be avoided and it has been followed like it is followed from a long time now we think now we ladies are in all the fields and uh, it is like it is said that females should be active they should be exercising actually those days also females were active all other days only these three days they used to take care it was not because of any ashuddhi or any impurity but it was formulated or it was made these the systems were made to keep the women healthy and protect their reproductive system and also for a healthy progeny she was asked to take head bath only on the fourth day actually any cold thing like you know cold or uh, anything which cools the body fast may disrupt the bleeding that may be the reason all these uh, regulations were made even if you see today the lifestyle changes and the, uh, it has entirely changed we are into a new uh, generation in which I think very hardly people practice this these things but at the same time we see that female re reproductive organ ailments or gynecological ailments like polyps fibroids cervix cancers of cervix uh, even f uh, four out of five girls are today suffering from dysmenorrhea. All this, all these are on rice now, and this is really a food for thought. Regarding uh, treatment, siddha treatment, there are medicines uh, which we do not give uh, during uh, periods. It is not because, again, because of any ashuddhi or anything, but it is because they, those medicines can uh, disturb the flow, uh, the normal flow of the blood. So, uh, and there are medicines which are given actually because if the patient, patient or female is suffering from any gynecological ailments, problems, she is given pre prescribed medicines. But there are medicines which we, are, we, which we don't give. External therapies and uh, external treatment like oilation, massage and uh, vigorous treatments are actually avoided. Even for the physician, she also follows the same thing. She doesn't uh, do the treatment or healing that time. And also, and when it comes to treatment and healing, it is very sacred and pure and we, we want the best outcome. So, we have been instructed and I think this, has, this is followed by all the traditional practice, practitioners and also the people who are in, uh, in uh, this Indian system of medicines that uh, some plants, uh, especially herbs or medicinal plants which we use for healing, we keep away from those plants during menstruation. This is also not because of any impurity or ashuddhi, but it it helps us to, uh, you know, it it is a it is a tradition which we follow from ages, and we want to keep it like that to give the best healing. Uh, this may be the reason why Lakshmi Kuti Amma stresses or she sticks to her uh, strict regimen, because she is not just a healer, but she is a lifesaver, and she believes that believing her traditions and her uh, disciplines and the rules and regulations have helped has helped her to give the best healing and is the key and to the success in treatment in her career we totally respect her views if you see if you go and see her village you see that 
people, ladies living, you know, without any ailments, they don't have any health problems, they are living uh, without disease free and you can see even 100 years, 105 years old ladies there, uh, uh, healthy and hale even now. So ultimately the outcome which they want, like healthy and uh, you know fit, that is there. So everybody wants to be healthy and uh, fit. And I don't think that uh, following a regulation and sticking to it doesn't link to any superstition or taboo. It is their way of life. As Buddha said, you are uh, free to choose the path you wish. So everybody is free to think in their way. And I think what she said is a part of her life. We are blessed to meet her and thankful to God to give us an opportunity to know her.